Well, you all knew it was going to happen sooner or later. We've got the big kahuna himself on here. He's been an AFC champion many times in the past. He's won about, I don't know, how many, three or four ABT grand finals. Mate, Matthew Mott, welcome to the show, mate. We had to wait till you wound down your old show until you had <laughs> a few withdrawals and came came on the ABT show. Oh, mate, mate no, I've been waiting for the end. This is a highlight of my day, you know, what can I say? I think this is a bit of a, a – mate, we got you on the show the other day. Now you've got me on. Uh, it all works pretty good. Uh, ABT has been a big part of my life. I talked about it last night on the show, actually our last show. So it's uh, it's pretty awesome. I must be, I must admit, mate. And it's uh, it was interesting. I don't know if you saw the show a few weeks ago, but we had John Schofield on, and uh, you and Scoey fished a few teams tournaments in the early days. Very complimentary of your fishing ability. Maybe not yeah. so complimentary of your early decision making. But I think between <laughs> the two of you, you got some, you got the job done, didn't you, mate? He was a massive influence. I, I, I don't. It's funny, Scully didn't teach me about fishing. It wasn't about the fishing, it was the mental side. That that's where that guy just shone. You know, like, you know, you'd be I was a young fella and be like, oh mate, they're whacking them over there, let's go over there. And he goes, No, if they're catching them there, we'll catch them here. And he taught me a lot of that thinking outside of the box. And as I said, it wasn't about how to cast or what to fish. You know, we'll probably equal as far as that goes. But just that mental side, I learned so much out of what he taught me in that. And, you know, it's just unbelievable, you know. It, it, just as I say, the, the things that he taught me, I've just carried on for the rest of my life. So it's been pretty cool. So are you admitting that at some time a young Matthew Mott was a bit bloody hot under the collar and uh, probably <laughs> ran around too right? much and didn't have that settled attitude? <laughs> Mate, um... Yeah, look, you know, back in the old Meatworks days, you know, we, we played hard. We played very hard. And uh, now he was a big influence on that. You know, someone getting the road, well, let's go over there and smack him in the mouth and we'll sort it out that way. And he'd be like, no, how we'll get him is we'll beat him on that scoreboard. That'll hurt him more than anything. Yep. And, uh, yeah, as I said, he taught me a lot about that, about, you know, playing the game hard but being nice off the field. You know, there's the same sort of things when we played footy. So taught a lot of that stuff put that aggression into the right focus. And it was always about, don't worry about what the other guy's doing. You, we've got to worry about what the fish are doing because we're going against the fish, not not the personality, the fish. We'll get them on the bank when we hold the trophy up and say, hey, guess what, guys, we tell you up again. That's where you get the satisfaction. So, as I said, mate, that, that them early years with John, just I, I just took that on and hopefully I can hand a lot of that stuff on to the young fellas these days. That's awesome, mate. Uh, tell us about uh, your, your AFC time. And a lot of people will know you, of course, through the AFC. Tell us a bit about AFC. And I want to hear the story about the producer that pulled you aside mm -hmm. and, and injected some personality into you. Tell us that story. Well, mate, I won, I won the grand final in 2005. That was probably the biggest event. I'd won a couple of comps, but that was the big. That was we were trying. AFC was in a second or second year or something like that. Yep. And that's the pinnacle. Everyone. And the beauty back then is why it was so special is you had to win a grand final. There was no, there was no, you know yourself, mate, there was guys come along throwing money at you, just let me on the show, and you'd say to them, mate, easy, just win a grand final. Like, yep. you can't buy you've got to earn your way, you can't buy it. So I won that. We go down to Sydney, the big lights on from Mergen. I'm like, holy hell, what's going on? There's producers running around. I was in awe of the whole lot. And... You know, being me, the easiest way to, to break the ice is sit back with the camera guys and have a few beers, a few late nights, you know, which probably did upset, upset my people like yourself, the odd time. But we <laughs> did that. And um, one of the producers said to me one day, mate, your goal, what I want you to do is you've got to come up with a saying. He said, every time I drive past you, I want you to say number one on the water, baby. And I'm like, I'm not saying that. You look like an idiot. And he goes, mate, I'm telling you, every time I'll point to you and you say it. And then... When other times, if you catch a big fish, I want you to do the jump for joy. And I went, really? And we did it. And I felt like an idiot at the time, but the rest was history. Because as he said, people don't remember. That's where the beauty with, you know, with the Harrys and myself. And people don't remember what fish you catch. They remember the personalities. And he taught me that. And as I said, that the rest is history now. They've sort of catchphrases I get thrown back in my face for the last half of 20 years. But it's cool, mate, to be, at least remember for something, I suppose. That's right. You're, you're number one on the water, and now you're a little shop in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> That's the one. See, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. I'm taking just, mate, just a little shop in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> That's awesome, mate. I, through AFC, I suppose I remember you as being very competitive on the water, but you were the – of all of the hearts all the way up the sleeve, some of wear it pretty close to here, mate. You'd wear it, like, way down here. You had some ups and downs over the time. T tell us about the time at Barumba when you thought you were going to get kicked out. Like, oh. I've never seen you so, so rattled. 
I was shattered. And, and the thing back then is you had no pre-fish. You didn't know what the other people were doing. And and it, you, your head, your mind games, you go out there, you had a really good, you know, you, you, we had four hours on the water, had a good, good pre-fish, went out in the dam, couldn't couldn't get a bite, nothing's happening, dropped a couple of fish early. You try and stay because every the pressure, like, it was is unbelievable. Then you start thinking everyone else is whacking them. I've only got two little ones. I bet you Timmy's smashing them. I bet you Harry's cracked them. I bet you Carl smashed a heap. You know, that'll be right. This is the end of my trip. I've blown the whole show. <laughs> what can I do? And then you come in and you're sort of looking around. And back then nobody, you know, you were really strict on not – no, it, it wasn't fake. Look, we didn't know. We weren't allowed to see what the other guy got. And you were thinking, and then you know, obviously you being your vindictive purpose, say, "Oh, I think, mate, I think you're gone." And I, and then you'd be saying the same thing to Timmy, "Oh, mate, I think you're gone." So we'd all be sitting there looking at each other, going, "Oh, gee, you know, where are we with all this stuff?" You know, this is once you're out, you, it's basically impossible to try and win another grand final. Once you're out, you're out. And uh, mate, lucky enough to get on that scale, and you see it when we watched the old show the other day. You know, that was just that was the you didn't know. You didn't know where you were You were hoping, but you're thinking, oh, and, mate, that was awesome. And then that other time where um, it was funny, I was thinking about it before, that the one with the Monique when uh, she was a little little girl. Now she's got kids, you know, her grandparents and she's got yep. children of her own, and she made me that spinnerbait and said, Dad, I want you to take this, and it was a strand out of every colour and looked stupid as. And yep. I remember talking to Starling, uh, Steve, about it, and I said, I'm just going to throw this. I've got nothing to lose. And, um, yeah, end up smashing the fish on it. And or, it was funny because leading on from that story, I remember driving, we were, I think we were going barrel fishing, and I scraped through and I was in. And a really good mate of mine, David Green, who I was talking to the other day, was the guy who got knocked out. And I felt really bad and we were talking on the phone to our, while we were driving each other's cars. But the funny thing about it was a few years later when, when it was more of a team's event, we came back and we won AFC together a couple of years in a row. So it just shows you that, you know, roundabouts and how things turn around. So it was, yeah, it was an awesome journey, mate. Loved every, the whole 10 or 11 years I did it, I loved every minute of it. Now, when we see you at uh, ABT events now, it's usually at the uh, at the Barra Tour. Yeah. Uh, I think you, like me, like you, you probably fish for Barra more than I do, but... Man, I really look forward every year to going and just get in that bite. And for me, it's not the fight, it's not the jump, it's not the holding the fish. It's the roll in that lure and having that bite, which is so savage that it could bruise your guts. That's what yeah. keeps you coming back, isn't it? Oh, mate, you know, obviously I was a barra guide and still do a bit of it with selected clients nowadays. But I did that for 10 years. But now, I suppose the last two or three years doing it with Dylan with a couple of years, and we had a lot of success. And then, you know, everyone... You know, knows Tommy now, <laughs> yep. especially Nicole. His bank balance is a lot less. But anyway, <laughs> that's pretty funny. But, mate, I just – there's nothing – the anticipation and to get that initial hit on a barra when they're savage in it, like – because you, the thing is with barra, you know, you can be fishing for hours for nothing, for nothing, and next all of a sudden – bang that rod nearly gets ripped out of your hand and the adrenaline rush and they're jumping and they're carrying on there really isn't nothing like it but because there's nothing like it because of what you have to do to get that it's not easy it's late nights big days hot all that sort of stuff and, it, and just getting that one hit it makes the adrenaline and mate, even if it's a 60 centimeter you know that they're, they're it's just so much fun it is something that everyone's got to experience Mate, that's uh, you reminded me of that story there. I want you to give us the sixty-second version of the uh, of the Nicole story <laughs> behind the ciggies down the shop. Tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us Tommy's story, and I want the Moddy version with all the embellishments. <laughs> so you want me to add a bit to it? No, uh, we'd done the all nighter. We'd done really well. Uh, it was uh, obviously we were going to bed early. Unfortunately, we didn't go to bed, and then a few more beers and a few bigger crowds. Uh, poor old Tommy, this is his first Barra tournament, first doing of things. And if you meet Tommy, everyone knows who Tommy was for about the second day yep. into the tour. He'd run out of ciggies. Uh, you guys were going into to uh, Prossy to, to get some uh, supplies and different things. And he goes, says to Nicole, oh, you wouldn't be able to buy me a packet of ciggies for me. And she goes, oh, no worries. Being Tommy's like, oh, here's my credit card. Here's my number. Just go and get it. Like, I'm happy. Just, I don't care. You know, there's plenty of money in there. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Nicole, Nicole goes into Frosty, 
buys like six cartons or whatever. I said, oh, he wants six cartons. So it was six cartons. So it was end up like 40 odd packets. It was like four, five hundred or $600. She comes <laughs> back and she's like, really? Did, did, this is how much people pay for smokes. So by this stage, there's like 30 people in the ring having a few beers, talking about bar and talking different things. Nicole brings over this and says, uh, I bought your ciggies and it cost 600, 625 <laughs> bucks or something. And Tommy's like, what? <laughs> She's going. And then, the, and then we just started hammering. We said, oh, you know, that's the best. You know, you, someone went in there 10 minutes later and the IGA was closed down because that was the biggest sale they'd ever done all day. And old mate, they'd given old mate a bonus for the week because he'd ripped some lady off, you know, 600 and something dollars for a back of the stickies. And, oh, mate, it was – and the poor old Tommy's like, man, what am I going to do with all these smokes? Like, I know I smoke a bit on tour, but this is ridiculous. So he's going around to everyone, oh, you know, do you want a pack of the smokes? I'll do them for 40 bucks. I mean, he's trying to get some money back into his account. <laughs> he's like, man, you know, I hope we win, in which we're lucky enough to win the next comp because he's like, man, I don't know if I've got enough money to cover it. Or oh, there's 15, <laughs> 40 packets of cities over here for the rest of the trip. I don't know if I can pay me way off in that maybe. So, yeah, that was that was a really valuable lesson. Don't let Nicole go and buy a beer or smokes because you could end up with a pallet. You know, That's throw right. a couple of kegs, go and get a – Go and ask her to get a tall and she brings back a keg. That's you know, right. so, yeah, pretty get, valuable get, lesson. Get her to go get a bottle of milk, she brings a cow back. <laughs> Good way to give make everyone give up smoking is just <laughs> let Nicole let Nicole take your account for the day. <laughs> awesome, mate. Um, Let's talk a bit about um, about Garmin. It's a, it's a great sponsor of yours and it's a great sponsor of ABT's. And, and ABT, we've always been very heavy on the Garmin Verb camera. It's been such a great camera for us. We give them an absolute caning and we use yeah. it to make those awesome highlights packages that we show in the Brim and the Bass events. Um, but nowadays, that they've actually discontinued those Verb cameras. Yeah, so the, the advice is if you want one, go get one before they run out of stock in shops because... They're pretty good. I know I've got 10 of them. You've probably got a handful of them as well. Yeah, I've got six. <laughs> but, Mate, they were awesome. Um, and and the one thing I just wish people realised, and, I mean, it was probably a mistake of everyone, but that integration that you can do with your sounder, I mean, I used to do a few videos on it and stuff like that, but that that was just awesome. Everyone's into GoPros, anyone's into Garmin, you know, doing that stuff on their boat. This made it so much easier because instead of going out and on something and then thinking you got the right shot and then when you look at it back later on you got half your head cut off or you've missed your the right this you can look at your screen and it just comes up on your screen you run it through the screen on your sounder and it makes it so much easier for doing that sort of stuff and mate they were just robust you know like i've had one there for you know five or six years as you said i mean you're watching a video that you do with your stuff when you're doing your your live now and you know as you say you're out there in the salt water you're bashing it around you're doing all that they just handle it. And as I said, that integration makes everything that Garmin does integrates with everything Garmin has. So it's not like it's something special. It's just what they do. So it's pretty cool. I, was, I, know, I know Jason was the same. I know we were disappointed when when it um, when they said, oh, look, we're just not going to do it. And it was just purely a, a financial, hey, look, we're not selling as much because you can go and buy one off eBay for some dodgy yeah. brand. And, yep. You know, that's just the way it goes. But, no, nah, it's, it's – look, I've been very proud. I was, um, I was. It just sort of come, it fell into my lap at the right time with the Garmin stuff. They were just starting out. I'd been with Hummingbird for like twenty-one years with your brother, with Timmy, and that. Uh, they were moving in a different direction. We were probably moving in a little bit different direction, and um, you know, I wasn't looking for anyone. And then um, you know, that came along, and and. You know, the rest is history. Is It was funny. I, I've said this before. When when they came to me, they said, because back that stage, I said, mate, no one, Garmin, don't, like we were doing pigging and stuff like that, like all the pigging collars and all that, Garmin was the number one, but not so much in, in electronics. And they just said, look, if you come on board and stick with this and in five years we'll blow your mind. And I went, oh, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it all goes. You know, we're very cautious and um, – Wow, who would have believed we'd be in the position now? Like, blow your mind. Blows my mind every day I'd start my boat up. It's just out of control. And uh, let's, let's zone in on that because uh, it's the live scope stuff, which is really ticking all the boxes for everyone. And we've seen your videos online and Maddie Langford does them. We've seen all the COD guys down south do them. We've seen the Justin Nye and the Barra guys yep. publishing. You know, when I was a kid, I was always like, I wonder what it would be like if there was no water and I could see where all the fish were. 
and it's exactly what it does for you. It takes the water out of the equation and you can see what's happening down there. It's amazing, isn't it? The biggest thing that it does, and look, we, you know, yeah, it's, it's not cheap, cheap, but if you look at the big scheme of things of what you buy for a boat, what you pay for fuel, towing a car, all that sort of stuff, if you add it up, it's not that much. It's not really that dear. But what it does do is it, it gives average person, average guy who wants to go fishing, he doesn't have to interpret anymore. He can actually just see it. And, you know, some people go, oh, it's not right, it's, that's not fishing, blah, blah, blah. Well, maybe if you're, if you're a gun pro, turn all your sounders off. Take an anchor out. Take your boat off and paddle it. You know, that's that's the way it is. The, these people who have never done this stuff before, it's a great interpretation for them. And now they've got just as much chance of going out and catching a fish as what we have. So that's the whole idea. It's about everyone to, to enjoy what we all love. And it just gives those – because, you know, side scan, down scan, 2D, all that stuff's great. But you have to interpret it. You think I think that is. I'm not real sure. Yeah. And you got to remember these. You know, for people who aren't right into it like us, it's like nah, I think that's I think that's what it is, but I'm not real sure. But with this, it's there. It's swimming around. Oh, they're fish. Okay, I can see them live. It's it's as you see it. And the the analogy I use, which is uh, is if you think about it, if you were out at night and you had night vision goggles on and you look through those night vision goggles, that's exactly the same image. It's not crystal, crystal clear, but you can see what's going on. And if you if you think of it like that, that's the image that you get on your screen. It's it's live, it's real, and you can it's easy to interpret what it is. Now, um, we've seen it work with the cod and the barra, and we've seen your videos, especially with the new periscope mode, with the bass, you can see little bass from a long way away. My stuff's coming, and I'm really yeah. keen to see if I can see brim from a long way away with this thing. And I think if you can, I think, man, there's a whole market of people there that are going to love this technology. You definitely can. That That's something that we've worked internally with. You know, we, we've sort of, with the stuff they're doing with the yellow belly and the cod, and then we've up here with the bass, and then we've got the barra. You know, people are starting to realise that, and, and that's really good. It, it works just as effective in salt water, and we are looking at doing a lot of stuff with that. And I have sold. It's funny. I've sold a lot of um, a lot of setups for guys who do offshore. You know, 30, 40 meters, and it's changed the way they fish. A lot of them guys aren't social media guys, and they don't want to actually put stuff up because they're they you know they're little sneak, sneaky little snapper spot. They don't want anyone else to know about it. But they're yeah. utilizing that right now. So whether it's it's hard to get your head around it. it I don't try and think of it this way, but uh, salt, fresh water, current, it makes no difference to it. It's not a traditional sounder. It's not like what you would normally think. So don't even think that it's going to make a difference because it makes absolutely no difference. We've got guys up in the territory using it. it. makes no difference what the current is, what any of that stuff is. It has no effect to it. It's not like a normal transducer. It's totally different. That's awesome, mate. Um, and I'll, before I let you go, uh, Give us a plug for the shop in the middle of nowhere. You've got a fair bit of garment expertise there. I see the great wall of garment there behind you. There's a lot of cranky people because that's supposed to be sent out, but I couldn't because I had to leave. Um, yeah, look, mate, we've uh, a few year, uh, years ago, we got asked, obviously, for a long time, we didn't sell it. We didn't want to do that sort of cross thing. Uh, being, you know, the, one of the top garment pros. But they were pretty keen to do it because they realised that I'm not just going to go out there. This this is a part of a business. We've tried to keep everything set. We always try and keep everything separate. And um, yeah, mate, look, it's at the moment we are selling a truckload. A lot of people are, are we we sort of put ourselves as that whole live scope specialist. There really isn't anyone who knows as much about it as can understand it like we do. As far as your setups, it's not about price. It's about the advice. Um, and we can help you with that advice, telling you what unit you can sell, what unit, what you need to put on for what you want to do. Because every people, every person is different, whether that's buying a nine inch, whether that's buying a, a 16, depending on which, how you want to do it and what how you want to fish, this is the unit that you need to look at. So that's been really well received. And, um, mate, yeah, the, it's it's been pretty awesome at the moment. Well, and if people are watching this and they want to get in touch with you and pick your brains about a live scope or garment setup, how do they get in touch with you? Mate, you can just uh, – easiest th thing with these, phone numbers everyone forgets, even as 0428682594. 
if you want to give us a ring, charter, smack, whatever thousand things we got going on. I'm the I'm the bush version of Steve Morgan. That's what I am. I've got little <laughs> fingers in everywhere. Um, but yeah, look, just uh, message us on Facebook. That's on Messenger. That's the big thing these days of Basta Barra or Matthew Mott Sports Fishing. Uh, give us a message and um, look. Even if you even if you don't want to buy it off us, as long as we can get give you the right advice, and that means you go and buy it off somebody else who's a Garmin dealer, and that's easier for you because you want to support your local. I'm happy to give you whatever advice I can give you because that's what we're here for. You know, a bit of a dual role. So, give us a buzz, and we'll try and set you up. There you go, mate. You've changed since the old fist fight and meat worker, mate. Pleasure to have you on the show, mate. It's been great to take this well, mate. I'm a, I'm a grandfather now. I've got to be responsible. Look, thanks for you guys for doing this stuff too. It's a bit like our show. Uh, it, it, means a, it means a lot to people who, if you know, with all this crisis stuff going on, I know it's been a top, me and you talk off screen. It's been a tough time for you too, mate. You're doing a stellar job. And uh, let's get back to normal. It's it's getting there, guys. Do the right thing and we'll be up into it strong very soon. Good on you, Moddy. Thanks for the chat. Thanks, guys.